Welcome to Food Talks, hosted by Food Corps. So this week, here at the Farm to Cafeteria Conference, we've got stories. Because we think that stories can sometimes get at the complexity of the impact that we're having in a way that numbers don't always show. I wanted to make sure to thank Subaru for their support of Food Corps, and more specifically, their support of Food Talks tonight. So without further ado, I present to you Food Talks. So on my first day of service at Bayard Elementary School in Springdale, Arkansas, I was really excited. I was a little nervous, but most of all, I was eager. I was eager to meet the students and the staff that I'd be spending a year of service with. I knew it would take some time for the teachers to invite me into their classrooms to teach a lesson, or for the cafeteria staff to accept my local lunch menu ideas, or for the kids to trust me enough to try a piece of Swiss chard. So I told myself, I'm going to crash all three lunch periods, and I'm just going to hang out and get to know these kids. I walked into the cafeteria on that first day, and I could hear little groups of students at different corners of the cafeteria kind of whispering and giggling. And they were pointing at me, and they were saying, she's here. Food Corps is finally here. <laughs> and they actually called me Food Corps for the first day or so of my service, which was fine with me. So I stood at the cafeteria register, and I got to greet student after student coming in the line. And I got to just see the cafeteria flow and the environment. So I'm standing by the salad bar, and I'm seeing student after student serving themselves what seemed to be an all-you-can-eat helping of fresh fruits and vegetables. And I thought to myself, man, this year is going to be a breeze. These kids are on board. They're ready to go. They don't need me here. But I didn't know that a few minutes later, those fresh fruits and vegetables that they were serving themselves would be in the trash. I thought to myself, this is just a bad day. I'm going to come back tomorrow, and things are going to be different. So here's day two. I come into the cafeteria and I see kids throwing hundreds of unpeeled bananas, unopened milk cartons, and so much more. And I was pretty devastated. I didn't know at that time, but I talked around to the cafeteria managers and I talked to the teacher monitors and I found out that I wasn't the only one that was devastated by this cafeteria food waste. So I decided that I'm gonna come to the cafeteria more frequently and I'm gonna just talk to the kids, see what they're eating, see what they're throwing away, what they don't like, and just have a conversation. From talking to the kids, I realized that they liked plain whole wheat bread for their sandwiches instead of the highly processed, more expensive, fancier goldfish-shaped bread that they were being served because the cafeteria thought that that's what they wanted. I also found out that they were having a really hard time eating their oranges. Now these oranges were cut into halves, and let's face it, no one likes to eat a halved orange. So I took my notes, I listened to the kids, and small cost-effective changes such as cutting the oranges into wedges were made. And suddenly more kids were eating their oranges and they were enjoying their oranges instead of just trying to suck whatever they could out of that halved orange. <laughs> these small wins were awesome. And I was excited about it, but I knew there was still so much more to be done, and there was still so much more food waste that was happening. And we decided that we were going to do a cafeteria food waste audit. The goal of this audit was to calculate how much food waste and how many unopened milk cartons we were wasting each day. We found out that we wasted 220 pounds of food and 231 unopened milk cartons. The kids went on to estimate what this would look like for a year, and then over the course of their six-year elementary career, so from K through fifth grade, and the numbers were astronomical. In one year, the kids estimated that we would waste about 39,600 pounds of food waste and about 41,500 unopened milk cartons. In six years, this number went up even more. The numbers went up to 237,600 pounds of food waste and 249,480 unopened milk cartons. So we thought to ourselves, this is one school in one district in one state. At the end of our food waste audit, we had tables in the hallway with all the food that we had sorted out. And there were so many untouched foods, so much unopened milk cartons. 
And we were thinking, what are we going to do with all this? The kids talked about taking it home. They talked about donating it to local food pantries. They had all these great ideas about what they wanted to do with the food. We had several students coming up and down the hallways asking if they could have it because they thought it was a snack. And we had to deny all these kids because we were told that we had to throw it all away. The kids were confused. They didn't understand why we had to throw all this food that we had collected away that was untouched. So while I kind of investigated that, I did a compost lesson on the side in the meantime. And following this compost lesson, the kids and I determined that at the very least, we were going to compost whatever materials, whatever food scraps we collected from the cafeteria. While this was being constructed, I continued going to the cafeteria every day and collecting these food scraps and these milk cartons, and I you know, would separate them out. And every day, more and more kids were coming up to me so intrigued and just really curious about what I was doing. Miss Cecilia, why are you sorting out this trash? Why are you putting this trash into separate bins? What, what is composting? I had my kindergartners asking me, what is composting? It turned into these awesome conversations with these little elementary students about food waste and about compost and about fruits and vegetables and about what fruits and vegetables do for your body. And I was just pretty impressed by the, some of the conversations we had. The cafeteria system can be pretty robotic at times, as I'm sure many of you know. The kids come in, they get their tray, they sit down, they scarf their food in the short amount of time they have to eat. They throw their food away without even a thought as to where the food goes or what happens to the food. The simple act of sorting out the compost from the trash made them slow down. They had to slow down and they had to mentally and physically sort out the food waste from the trash. And slowly, this turned into a small solution to kind of reduce our food waste in our cafeteria. Every day, I had more and more students come up to me saying, Miss Cecilia, Miss Cecilia, today I ate all my fruits and vegetables and I only have my orange rinds to throw away in our compost bin today. Or, Miss Cecilia, broccoli really gives me gas, but I tried it again today, and I really like it. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. And one day, I'm sitting in my office. You know, I'm sitting there. It's after school. Most of the kids have already gone already. And I get this knock on my door, on my office door. And so I open the door, and there's four third graders standing there. And these four third graders who were fed up with waiting for me to come up with this master compost plan for their master compost team plan. They came up to me and they had a list of duties for their compost team. They had gotten approval from their teacher, from the principal, um, and they told me, Miss Cecilia, we are the new compost team. <laughs> yeah. They said, we are the new compost team and we're gonna come to the cafeteria every Monday and we're gonna take on the compost duties. And just like that, I was given the boot from the third graders. <laughs> Never had I been more proud <laughs> to be fired from a position in my life. <laughs> it's pretty great. So now every Monday, Christopher, Rubina, Lennon, and Brian confidently take on these compost team duties. They're in there every Monday. And after school, these little elementary school kids are pushing the cart of all the food scraps to the compost bin. And they do it with so much pride and so much enthusiasm, and I just I never thought I would see a kid so enthusiastic about food scraps or food waste. But it's been these small wins, these small victories, and these cost-effective changes like standing in the cafeteria lunch line, giving kids high fives when they've either eaten all their fruits or vegetables or even attempted to try a new fruit or vegetable for that day, that have really made this the greatest impact on me as a food course service member. I feel beyond blessed and so thrilled to be a part of the team at Bayar Elementary School and to be a part of Food Corps as an organization that I get to do this every single day. I am more than confident that Christopher, Rubina, Lennon, and Brian will be a part of Food Corps class of 2027. So you guys watch out for them. Thank you.